Hey, what's up everyone? Sean here with Blue Ridge Silverhound and I am happy to uh, introduce the Pocket Change Market Report for April 10th, 2021. So we are going to take a look at the most relevant, raw, ungraded errors and varieties that have sold on eBay in the last 24 to 48 hours. A lot of great stuff to talk about if you guys are heading, heading out to uh, go to the bank, pick up some coin rolls. For a little roll hunting exercise or perhaps, uh, you know, seeing as how things are beginning to open back up, a lot of people have been uh, sharing their experiences online with uh, coin shops and some of the regional, uh, more local coin shows. Uh, it's been seeing a lot of great cherry picks and this would be the place to talk about them. If, uh, you know, if you found something that you had paid, you know, a few bucks for and then, you know, come to find out, you know, the variety that you have is worth 30 40 50 bucks i would say that more than qualifies for what we have here in the pcmr and um like i had mentioned all the coins uh featured here are uh all raw uh ungraded of course uh there is kind of like that middle ground marketability if a coin is worth like 10 15 20 bucks obviously it wouldn't make any sense at all to send it off to a grader pay them you know, 15 to $30 to grade an attribute, an error, or a variety. Uh, it could get pretty expensive. And at the end of the whole, you know, ordeal, you'll still end up with a coin that's worth 15, 20 bucks. So why not just go ahead and send it raw? Um, so we are going to use just the eBay seller photos and uh, a lot of great stuff. The market is, is on pace for just a, just strong, strong secondary market, uh, sales. Um, as they have been since the beginning of the year, uh, things are not slowing down any, as a matter of fact, um, you know, they, they are continuing on as, as predicted. Uh, we're not going to see like a huge kind of like bubble burst or anything like that. Seeing as how that a lot of the coins that have, that have sold for a lot less money about a year ago, uh, were probably underpriced to begin with. And it's just the market catching up more collectors coming in to the hobby and really, you know, uh, doing a price adjustment that way. So more people coming in, more more desirability for certain errors and varieties. And you guys can kind of like paint the rest of the picture. That's just the way it goes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Uh, again, all activity is from the last 24 to 48 hours. Uh, I want to thank everyone for your support of Blue Ridge Silverhound as always. You guys are simply amazing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first coin. We have a 2000 Lincoln Memorial Sand. This is just a beautiful coin. Uh, very high grade. As you guys know, this is a uh, copper coated zinc coin. So that's what we're seeing here on the reverse of this incredibly broad struck example. Um, yeah, there's no collar present when these were struck. So the metal flow has to go somewhere. So it expands outwards. This is a really nice centered example, uh, very desirable to someone that collects these type of coins. And uh, of course, you know, it really does help that it is a, uh, what we call a millennial type coin. Uh, the year 2000 was uh, pretty memorable for a number of reasons. The gold Y2K bug, if you guys remember that. Um, this one sold for 20 bucks. Not too bad, and it's what you would expect normally for a copper-coated zinc. These, uh, this particular date uh, specifically, um, is pretty easy to find with uh, with a nice broad strike. All right, so you're going to see a trend in this video. There's a few coins that um, that are are on the list, obviously, but they're all like either statehood or national park quarters. And there's actually, if you catch them. There are some pretty, pretty nice uh, errors and varieties that you could find on these coins. And um, people on the secondary market have been embracing these coins uh, because, uh, you know, the, when people think of statehood quarter program, sorry, that's my dog's bark in the back. The one thing about statehood quarters that I could reliably say is that uh, not only is it still to this day a very popular collected series, but... There is actually quite a few various minor errors uh, that you can find on these coins. And I think at the time of release, we really didn't pay too, whole, too much attention to some of the minor errors. But today, where there's a, there's a heightened kind of uh, marketability about some of these minor errors, people have taken notice. 
Now check out this 2000 Philadelphia Maryland State quarter. This one right here has a, uh, it's slightly off center. Um, the actual seller thought maybe it was off center. Uh, it could either be a little bit off center, although it does have a pretty nice full rim on the opposite e edge. Or it could be just slightly broad struck. I, can't, I guess we could make the argument or the case that it could be either or when it's this minor. Um, the off-center nature of this coin. Or it could even be a, um, uh, what you call it, a uh, partial tilted collar as well. Uh, the only way we'll know is by looking at the reeded edge to see if it's got that, uh, that raised kind of railroad look to it. But um, this is a coin right here that sold for $28.12. Of course, a, buy, uh, a best offer was accepted for this example here. All right, so the next coin on the list is yet again another statehood quarter. And again, this is like a, a just prime example of a coin that back in 2006, again, not a lot of people really paid any attention to this. And you can see why. At first glance, it looks relatively minor, and it looks like part of the, of the design. But we have a 2006 P. This is a Philadelphia struck coin. I mean, it's in really nice shape. Um, you know, they, they, there are still some of these 15 to 20 year old statehood quarters that you could effectively pull out of change today that still appear like this. All right, so this is what I would consider like a mint state 63 ish type grade, but. If you weren't paying enough attention, take a look at the little chimney rock right there. Um, the seller actually imposed a second coin of what a regular chimney rock would look like. And then the one coin that he's promoting. All right, so you can see just the normal chimney rock here. And then this one right here has that uh, that little die chip hanging off the, the side of the uh, the monument right there. But this is a really cool, again, if you're if you're good at taking really nice close-up pictures of something like this, I'm happy to say that your efforts will go noticed. Uh, this coin sold for $6. While that doesn't seem like a whole lot of money, if you had found, it, let's say you had a BU roll of these and you found maybe 10 examples. I mean, if you did sell them at 6 bucks a pop, I mean, that's $60 in your pocket. I, I mean, I would take that all day long. And um, if you do this on a regular basis, it's really more about the volume, uh, just the, the overall kind of like final goal of the totalization of the amount of money that you make off of as many coins as you can. Keeping in mind that there is shipping, you know, some folks like to ship these in a plain white envelope. If it's packaged correctly, you could get away with doing something like that and just using a, a posted stamp. Uh, but they, again, this is another example of a coin that you guys should look for. Um, you know, it, people do want these and they're beginning to take notice. They're collecting these by, by actual size progression. Uh, over time, these things get bigger on the coin. Um, and it's just a really neat, neat oddity. All right. The next one that we have here is an 83 P Kennedy half dollar. Um, now what we're looking at here is of course the initials. Uh, this one was a missing FG initials. Of course, I kind of see a partial on there. Um, and it's really just a, an overpolished die. Uh, and it, it was quite common during the 70s and 80s. Um, 1982 is attributed in the Cherry Pickers Guide. And I believe 1972 um, is also attributed also. But that one's a little bit more rare to find. But this one right here is an 83P. Uh, usually no, we don't pay any extra consideration for partial initials. Uh, usually if you see a partial initial, it's not a missing initials. However, this one did sell for a few bucks. As a matter of fact, it sold for $8. So for all you roll hunters out there, you know, you can promote something like this on the secondary market and make a few dollars. I mean, keep in mind the $8 that someone had paid for this coin is the same as one ninety percent silver half dollar. So look at it that way and you'll see the extra value. All right, so go ahead and check out some of your uh, your uh, um, Lincoln uh, wheat scents. Uh, this is a good one here, 1950D, but this one is a really cool variety. I found a number of these in my travels, and uh, I have not sold one, but based off of the amount of, amount of money that this one did sell for, it might be time to actually you know reconsider. Uh, the 1950D date is one that... Uh, uh, 
would be kind of like the uh, the gateway to a bunch of different repunch mid marks for the 50s. Uh, there was a lot to look for on this date. And one of the biggest uh, and most popular repunch mint marks, uh, did I say repunch date? Repunch mint mark. Sorry about that. One of the most, uh, I, I guess, endeared, um, very, very collected, very well collected, might I add, repunch mint marks is going to be the D over horizontal D type. There was only a few of them that exist in the Lincoln Cent series and probably across all denominations by themselves. But this one right here, ladies and gentlemen, is RPM number three. So if you're on coppercoins.com, and this is an actual seller image, they tried mightily to capture the best details they could, but it looks like there was a lot of uh, uh, um, overexposure of the lighting, uh, which made this one look uh, and appear lighter and foggier. Uh, but this is a D over horizontal D, RPM number three, but you can see kind of like that top tail right here of um uh i believe that is the um um the the bar of the d just turned 90 degrees or rotated 90 degrees um but that is the uh the marquee kind of uh attribute you'll look for on this coin this one sold for 56 dollars and 25 cents keep in mind it's a nice mint state example so people want the finest specimens of specific varieties and it's understandable uh, because you know those coins will have value and they will continue to enhance in value over time all right so this one's cool for all you folks north of the border and even some of you guys that are in the u.s that actually you know come across stuff like this it's a 1981 canadian penny this one uh was struck through kind of like a mid mid-state die cap um, you can see that right here. It's all, uh, there's nothing there. And uh, uh, it's not a later die state where you could see some of the uh, um, devices from the die push through the very thin cap at that point. Uh, this one still had a lot of meat on the bones when it was struck. Uh, this one right here. And um, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, a best offer was accepted. The original asking price was 220 bucks. Um, it would not be crazy to think that this one sold for between $150 and $200, whereas a comparable Lincoln cent of the same type and same date would command probably 25% of that amount of money. I mean, it's night and day, but it just goes to show you the dedication to the Canadian error community. Um, there's very few errors of this type out there, and that's why they sell for the amount of money that they do. I always tell everyone, if you could find a really nice affordable lot, do so, all right? So we had a lot of five coins, and they were all, uh, you know, they were all pitched as being off-center struck. Um, I would say, you know, you could probably make the argument that a few of these are broad struck, like the nickel and possibly the half dollar, because you do have a full rim on the opposite edge of where the off-center is. Uh, but we have 88 Lincoln cent. A 1980 Jefferson nickel, 19, it looks like 83 Roosevelt dime, an 83 quarter, which by itself is pretty nice. It's a nice rarity. And an 83 Kennedy half dollar. All right. So uh, usually the whole premise with this is you buy it. And it's either going to serve like a dual purpose. You either buy this to add to your collection. All right. It's really neat. You know, it's something that you want. Or you buy it with the um, the notion that you're just going to turn around and flip these as singular auctions apiece. And whatever you decide to do, um, you know, that that is definitely two very, very uh, noble things, you know, to do uh, with, with a lot like this. And furthermore, you would probably make more money at the end if you did sell these, you know, piece them out, sell them individually. Um, that's what I like to do. Here's some images of the reverse. And uh, this lot right here. Sold for $141.70, and there was actually a number of bids that um, that bumped this one up to the price that it did sell at. All right, have no fear. Foreign world coins have a lot of potential. Some people just don't like dealing with them because uh, um, they're hard to get rid of once, <laughs> once you have them. Um, the the desire, desirability to regular collectors of like U.S. coins just isn't there. But you got to keep in mind, a lot of these coins from like the 40s and 50s, like the uh, uh, the Costa Rican five centimos coin that you see here, you know, might have been struck at one of the U.S. mints, 
All right. So we did see a lot of that, you know, uh, during World War II and post World War II. It was a very common thing. And um, again, you know, there is a dedicated collecting community base for world coin errors. This particular one right here, this 53 Costa Rica, sell, sold for $48. Um, and it is off center by about 10%. Here's another one that has uh, picked up a lot of popularity here recently, and that is the improper alloy mix uh, Lincoln cents, uh, and probably other coins too, like the Jefferson Nichols. But uh, this is what we call in the community a woody. All right, so it's got the nice wood grain pattern. You usually see them in coins from like, you know, the teens all the way up to the 50s, maybe 60s. Um, and then there was even some in much later dates as well. Uh, but this is just a really good kind of like um, mid VF 30, 35 ish example. Uh, and when you could see the uh, uh, the ingraining of the alloy mix and what it is, is, you know, the little bit of tin that's in these coins wasn't mixed properly with the copper. All right. So that's why you have this this effect on these coins. Um, and, you know, the, the earlier it seems to the earlier the example, it seems to be that these sell for a lot more money. Uh, this one right here sold for a best offer somewhere south of $28.94. Probably sold for about maybe $20, uh, which is a very fair amount of money because people generally uh, overlook these. They throw them back and they're, you know, and it's like, oh, it's just a common date, you know, 1930s Lincoln. 1983 uh, Lincoln Memorial set. Now, this is easy to miss. But we have some pretty nutso stuff going on here. Um, the seller did mention that there was a little bit of a spike head. So it's a little die crack that probably went through the W and E and we here in In God We Trust. But we also have some uh, abraded die type stuff going on too. Uh, you can kind of see it here on the reverse. It looks like there was a die clash that was being repaired by a mint employee. And probably had some on the obverse. But the most glaring thing is that Lincoln's poor head is detached from his body. We had some uh, some over-polishing of his neck area. So this gives gives it the appearance that his head is actually floating above its, uh, over his body. Um, this one right here is sold for $18.25. Again, a very popular kind of oddity in the collecting community base and one in which that is uh, continuing to gain popularity. So this kind of falls under kind of like the floating roof, missing initials type of error whoa this one's bright uh and again we got a little bit of an overexposure kind of issue here on these images probably also maybe um a uh a foggy camera lens uh but we have a 1938 lincoln wheat set what we got here is some clogged die action so the few letters in e pluribus unum was um crammed pack full of grease and debris all right, so when these coins were struck, any letter on the actual die that was filled with this stuff uh, will not translate into anything on the coin. All right, so that's pretty neat. And uh, again, we see these all the time. If you search through Wheat Sense, uh, these come up actually more more frequently than you think. Uh, this one right here sold for $8.50. You can tell your friend you just made 850 times face value <laughs> off of just a beat up coin. And there you go. Proof positive. All right, for all you proof set lovers and hunters out there, this is a good one. I, I'm willing to bet probably 90% of you don't know that this one even exists. But if you're a fan of going through sites like Variety Vista, DoubleDie.com, you know, some of the Wexor sites and things like that, um, then this, this is a coin that you could identify with. It's a 1964 proof Jefferson nickel. And this one is both a doubled die obverse and a DDR, all right? So it's attributed as number one on both. And on the uh, United States of America and e Pluribusunum, you can see the minor doubling. Again, this is all doubling that generally you can't see with the naked eye. So I encourage people, if you don't have it, you need a inexpensive eight to 10 times power magnifier. They are out there for under 10 bucks. I even got them in my Amazon links below in the description box. I say it every week and I always end up selling maybe three or four of them. It's really cool because I'm helping out the community without breaking the bank. All right. You guys want to go out there and do some hunting and cherry picking. You got to do it on the relative affordable. 
Uh, but you can see some of the doubling on here. It's oh so fine. But again, under that 8 to 10 times power magnifier, you can see the split and notching. Uh, the split serifs on the letters. America is quite nice. And then on the obverse... Uh, you have them quite nice on not only the date as well. You can see that that splits in the actual devices, but also Liberty as well. Pretty cool. Uh, this one right here sold for $35.15. So you've essentially turned a coin that's worth, to most people, a dollar because it has no cameo into 35 times uh, value, uh, which is cool. Here's another good RPM to look for. This is the big one for this date, 1959D. This is the first year of the Lincoln Memorial back design. Uh, this one is a D over D over D. So uh, it's a uh, triple RPM. Uh, it is actually a Cherry Picker's Guide Variety 2. It's FS501 in there, RPM number one. This one sold for $13.90. All right, probably another coin that you've tossed back at one point, but it's okay. At least we're recognizing, you know, these type of errors. Uh, what we have here is a 1999. You can barely make out that last digit in the date. 1999 Lincoln Memorial Cent. This one uh, had a little bit of strike through action, struck through a little bit of grease on the uh, periphery of the coin. Uh, so the, uh, the die had some leftover grease when this coin was struck. That's why you see things like the L in Liberty is missing. Part of the uh, last initial of the date. Um, even a little bit on the reverse too. You can see some trace amounts here. Um, at K3 and K9. This one. No pun intended. We're not talking dog jokes here. <laughs> uh, but this one sold for $15.49. A relatively minor coin. That sells for $15. Are you kidding me? Um, that's why we do it. I, I mean if anything. If you don't collect things like this. Because to me it's it's minor. But there is a lot of people that collect these regardless. And we've seen the prices creep up on an error that 12 months ago sold for maybe 50 cents to a dollar, maybe two bucks on a good day. And now they're $15. I mean, come on, guys. Uh, th this is easy money. Why not take advantage of it? All right. So for this particular one right here, we actually had a, uh, a seller. And I've actually reviewed a few coins from this seller. A really nice double die obverse. As a matter of fact, it's not double at all. It's a quadruple die obverse, 1964D, Kennedy half dollar. It's the one that you guys need to look for when you get a hold of 64Ds. Um, but there is no full obverse or reverse picture. I, I, I know this guy. Uh, not personally, but I know of his eBay store. And uh, he takes great photos of the close-ups. But you can see it just like the, the crazy quadrupling i guess <laughs> uh but there is a die marker that's between the n and i in united on the reverse it's going to be this little die scratch right here uh something to keep an eye on if you wanted to make sure that you had the qdo uh this one is also a cherry picker's guide fs 105 and it's sold for a steamy 60 dollars and 50 cents great money yeah, that's a $25 uh, dollar box of pennies, and these things are still being sought after on the secondary market. That's a full bank box right there, ladies and gentlemen. I believe they're NF String and Sons. Um, we've seen the uh, the supply uh, ease up on the secondary, or not the secondary market, but at the through the banking system. People are getting a hold of these boxes of pennies to search through. If you guys are curious, you could make a few dollars flipping these boxes online. Uh, this particular box here sold for $74.95, which is just a shade off three times face value. Here's another one with a nice tiny premium, 1954D Franklin half dollar. Um, you know, probably the one thing that, that, you know, draws your eye is this little thing right here. And that's just a little mini strike through. Um, nothing super glamorous or huge, but... People did notice it, and uh, the, the seller sure did too. So, congrats to the seller for even finding that little thing. Uh, let's see. This one sold for $27.50. Um, the coin was probably purchased for maybe $10, $15. Bucks, so, it's a nice modest gain. Here's another nice one too. Speaking of modest gains, it's a 1923 Peace Dollar. So, if you guys enjoy... 
uh, cherry picking through like scrap silver or scrap dollars of this type, like Morgans and Peas, then you might find something like this. Um, what we have here is a really nice strike through. And no, that coin did not take a hit. That is a legit strike through. It doesn't have buildup of material on either side of that anomaly. Here's a close up of the strike through right there. So it might have been a piece of wood or something like that. And then here's a edge view right there. All right. Whereas if it took a hit, you'd see the buildup right here pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, yeah, pretty clean example here. Uh, a coin that probably was purchased for between 20 and 25 bucks to begin with. This one sold for $52.15. Okay, so we have a, uh, a coin here, 1980-something. Uh, really can't tell what it is, but it's a Lincoln Memorial cent. The obverse was struck through a later die state cap. So a capped die in this particular case. Uh, the coin has a few issues. It's got some some scrapes here on the reverse uh which yeah you know take it take it or leave it some people don't like collecting problem coins but this one has a few issues uh this particular example right here sold for 20 bucks so that's not bad if you find it go ahead and make yourself an easy 20 dollar bill I, I love looking for these because i find them all the time it's a 1957 lincoln wheat scent that has a uh, quite a few of what they call internal uh, die breaks. So these little chips and breaks right here that you see, uh, they call these cracked skulls, uh, affectionately, but, um, yeah, these little breaks right here on the die. Yeah. They translate really gnarly on the coin. Uh, but again, you take great pictures, you'll have no problem selling these. These are attributed on kudzoncoins.com. So in case you're wondering, this one's probably on there. Uh, this example sold for $14 and 25 cents. This is actually quite a common error. So this is the only piece of currency on the list, but I figure, hey, if we're going to talk about gutter fold, I mean, let's talk about a fat old gutter. This one right here had a pretty substantial fold in the paper when the first and second printing occurred, and probably the third print. Um, so usually, you know, the, the gutter channel is usually a lot thinner, but this one was a straight up fold. So the paper had a bunch of issues. Uh, before things even gone underway for the printing process at the BEP. Uh, but this one right here is a 1985 uh, $20 Federal Reserve note with that gutter fold. And it's a wide one too. It sold for $195, which is effectively about four times the normal value if the gutter was a lot thinner, which is a wrinkle in that paper. And then you see this here on the reverse as well. Pretty, pretty nice note. Uh, looks to be in a relatively high grade specimen all right so if you guys liked that 2000 broadstruck lincoln scent that we saw at the beginning of the video it was coin number one how about this one okay this one is broadstruck too but there's also another thing that i think you guys need to know this one is also a wide am variety how cool is that so this is kind of a dual error variety that you just i i love seeing these and uh, i've seen them seen the wide AMs not only on broad struck coins, I actually owned one. Um, and there are off-center coins. As long as you have AM in America shown on an off-center struck coin, that's extra brownie points too. I think that's the more desirable uh, error variety combo. Uh, but this one right here sold for a best offer. Uh, their original asking price was $120. I would not be surprised if this thing sold for between 50 and 75 uh, it is worth all that in a bag of chips. The condition is breathtaking. Talk about holy broadstruck Batman. We have a 1999 P Jefferson nickel. This thing, when a Jefferson nickel usually is broadstruck, you know, it'll get up to the size of a quarter. I mean, no joke. That's how big they get. But I think this one's even bigger than a quarter. It's probably between, say, a quarter and a half dollar. That's how big it got. Uh, but this one right here, a nice, just incredibly stunning broad straw coin, sold for $63.74. All right, so this is straight up a problem coin, but this would trip up a lot of people, believe it or not. Uh, there is no variety or no error on this coin that you should have to worry yourself about with, okay? I mean, take a look at the reverse. It's This looks like it came from a parking lot, uh, but people will usually look at this thing right here it kind of looks like a die cut or a rim cut 
um, or I mean, uh, just straight up cut. It's not a rim cut because it's it's actually going into the device, the number of five in the date. But this coin took a monumental hit. You could just see the the roundness of the edge of the coin, and it goes flat. It went flat, which means this, this is a hit. And then the coin recirculated uh, to where it flattened out quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, this is a damaged coin. It is not an error, but keep in mind this is, this is a pretty common type thing to see on relatively damaged coins like this. Uh, this one sold for $40.20. Here's the killer part of this thing. There was about 16 bids that bid this one up. I don't know if it's shill bidding or whatever, but still, there there can't be that many uh, uneducated people because a, a cut die break is one of the more elementary coin errors to come across. And it's one of the ones that a lot of people learn about at first glance. Now, this one's cool. You know, it's like it, there is beauty in the details. It's a 1930D Lincoln Wheat Cent. I mean, it's somewhat of a more... Uh, you know, uncommon date, but even in this condition, this is a 10 cent coin right here. But really, ladies and gentlemen, if you look hard enough, there was a die chip right in the middle of the zero of the date. And ladies and gentlemen, people love stuff like that. Uh, kudos to the seller for taking just good enough pictures to show the dramatic nature of this little, little tiny die chip that fills the entire zero. About $15.50. Not bad. I would say that was a pretty good rip. So here's another coin right here with a few issues. If you look on the reverse, there's a lot of damage, pitting, that sort of thing. Uh, but you do see the uh, the curved clip on there. You also have the Blakesley effect over here on this side, which is what you want to see on this. It's a 57D Rosie. Uh, this one here is sold for $11.69, which is, by the way, about six times what the actual silver melt value is on this. Speaking of silver, here's another 64D candy half dollar. I mean, these things are ripe for various varieties. And uh, here's another one. This is one of my favorites, and I, I encourage you guys to continue to look for these. Um, it is both a RPM, and it's one of the most dramatic that you'll see in the candy half dollar series. Uh, D over D with a D, uh, secondary D south of the primary, I believe. Um, but it's also a double to die obverse. It's DDO number seven. Uh, you could just see the uh, the extra doubling here on like the uh, the serifs and stuff of the letters. Uh, pretty unmistakable. But th these two go hand in hand. You can't find one without the other. Sold for forty three dollars and twenty four cents. And finally, we're just gonna end it off on a really nice peachy off center Roosevelt dime that features a full date and a min mark. This thing is beautiful, nice high grade. Uh, problem free. You can even see the ripple of the edge where the uh, uh, the collar um, the collar die you know had struck up onto the edge there. Wow, pretty nice coin. I, I like this one. Uh, yeah, sure, it's a relatively modern date, but I think uh, I think I would give this one a pass. Um, it sold for forty one dollars and thirty eight cents, so you can't really fight it. You can't fight that feeling anymore. But this one's got it going on. That's going to go ahead and do it, guys. Uh, sorry for the late video on your Saturday. Hopefully, you guys got a few takeaways and you feel compelled to go out and do a little cherry picking this coming week or the rest of this weekend. Uh, and head over to the bank. We're seeing we're seeing more and more rolls hit the banking system. Thank God, because uh, I, I was getting a little nostalgic there for a moment, not finding any. Uh, but that's going to go ahead and do it. I appreciate your guys' time. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hit that good old bell for instant notifications. And uh, Coinaholics, we are discovering together. You guys take care. Happy hunting. And I'll see you on the next coin video.